uh, lucky lah to uh, to recruit you eh, as uh, one of their employee, uh, talented young uh, guy. Okay, compose eh, in your uh, presentation. Okay, um, assalamualaikum, Nsi uh, Amrel. Waalaikumsalam, Pakar. Nama uh, saya. Uh, okay. So, uh, surely akan uh, introduce lah. Kita tak sempat berkenalan lagi. Tapi kita boleh, turunkan boleh. dulu eh. Okay. Okay, boleh, boleh. boleh. Alright, thanks. Miss Noor asked, Maha please mute your mic. Hello. Hello, yes. A very good morning. I bid to Mr. Joshua, Mr. Muhammad Amri, Dr. Yusri, and fellow friends. I'm the MC of the second talk, Shichi. Today, we are glad to have Mr. Muhammad Amri Muhammad Juni from Talent Corp Malaysia. Now, please allow me to introduce our speaker. Mr. Muhammad Amri managed the Human Capital Department and Administration at Talent Corp Malaysia. He oversees all human resources and to end management from monitoring staff requirement, training, and remuneration. Besides, he has served in various industries, such as from manufacturing, information technology, retail, audit, automotive, and also media. Without any ado, let's welcome Mr. Muhammad Amri for his speech. Hello. Sir, please welcome. Okay, hi, morning. Thank you, Ms. Lim. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, for those who are still celebrating Hari Raya, Selamat Hari Raya. Uh, hope everybody is uh, is doing well. I believe majority of you are now at home. Am I correct? And uh, hope stay safe uh, during this current uh, situation that we're in. Uh, first and foremost, um, I would like to thank uh, UTEM for inviting Talent Corp uh, for today's session. Uh, as mentioned by Ms. Lim, um, <clears throat> I'm the head of human capital and admin for uh, Talent Corporation Malaysia. At the same time, I'm also part of the team which is called Industrial Partnership, whereby the team uh, meets up with uh, various organizations where we work with them closely on talent matters and we have collaborations as well. So for today's session, um, I believe uh, we've been uh, requested to talk about talent management and industry 4.0 in the era of the new normal. Uh, so let's move on with the slides. So before uh, we proceed, I deep dive further into our topic for today, um, I would just have a brief introduction of Talent Corp. Uh, not sure how many of you are um, aware of what we do in Talent Corp or our background. Probably some of you have uh, read about us as well. And I hope uh, at the end after my session today, uh, you guys will pay a visit to our website and learn more of what we do, which is very uh, useful for all of you. Okay. Uh, sorry, Ms. Lim, may I ask, uh, because I just joined, the students that are involved, are they final year students or uh, still, what, third year, second year? Yeah, we are a final year student. Last time. Final, final year. So you'll be graduating when? Yeah, uh, on this graduate, the jury ceremony normally will not from yet but our semester will be end on next month i think it's next month yeah oh okay so you guys are the one can great uh tony good great tony lah ah, so sekarang dah boleh kerja dah boleh boleh um, ah. um, lah, boleh <laughs> employ dia orang <laughs> <laughs> okay okay good uh, the reason why i ask because uh so that later part of the my presentation and the slides uh I may have to skew bits to that so that you all can prepare yourself to go into the working world eh? and also the challenges that you all will face, especially with the new uh, COVID-19 pandemic that has hit the world. Eh? Yeah. So how you can how you can help yourself to make yourself uh, more uh, visible in the market and also uh, more marketable. Yeah. So like I mentioned uh, quickly, I'll just try uh, run through with you about Talent Corp. Uh, we were established in 2011. And our mandate was basically uh, to drive the country's talent towards making Malaysia a dynamic and market-driven uh, talent hub. 
uh, we work to accomplish goal whereby we attract, uh, retain the right talents and expertise needed to support uh, Malaysia's journey towards achieving our greater economic progress. <clears throat> So Talent Corp role in, uh, in, in the uh, national ecosystem, uh, basically if you see here, um, we are now an NGC under Ministry of Human Resources. Yeah? Uh, and basically we are here to help the talent ecosystem achieve the right balance uh, between supply talents and also demand for present, present and future. Uh, if you see at present and future, uh, if you see at uh, <clears throat> on the right side, um, basically we look at understanding the talent supply and demand, uh, enhancing talent pipeline, promoting talent diversity, and facilitating talent mobility. So there are various programs actually that's, uh, that is being managed by us um, that we work closely with, uh, not just with the companies, but as well with uh, government uh, ministries and agencies as well. And... Um, we work closely uh, in terms of, for example, with industries, learning institutions such as uh, you guys, and as well as uh, uh, ministry agency, whereby we implement initiative that focus on three pillars, yeah, which I've mentioned there earlier, uh, pipeline, diversity, and mobility. So our target is actually uh, on the graduates, yeah, students like all of you here, women, as well as professionals. And our aim is basically to prepare the key talents uh, for the future of work. Yeah. So what are you expected to uh, do uh, as you leave your, uh, your studies and all that? Um, we want to ensure uh, graduates and emerging talents, such as all of you, are well equipped and industry required skills. You must be industry ready. Uh, in my following slides later, I will tell you how or I'll share with you how, what you can do in order to make yourself industry ready. Um, we promote talent diversity as well as talent mobility. Uh, so now we, let's go uh, more into detail in terms of talent of future. So all of you here are talents of the future. Yeah, you have a lot of years ahead of you. Um, so what we do now is preparing students for job that not yet exist and using technologies not yet invented to solve problems not yet identified. Yeah. It sounds uh, very challenging indeed because if you know, if you look like 10 years ago, yeah, uh, maybe Dr. Yusri, yeah, uh, 10 years ago or five years ago, uh, we were never been, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, familiar with the things such as Grab driver, okay? the most common that we are familiar with. But now uh, Grab driver is one of the occupation where people actually uh, move into. Yeah. Um, so these are some of the things that we need to prepare uh, students in terms of uh, what is the expectation of the future. So um, in the last three, four years, we always hear about uh, people or discussions uh, on the topic of Industry 4.0 and Future of Work, uh, where everyone is trying to attempt or to embrace and prepare themselves uh, due to the technological disruptions uh, which affects the organization. Mainly, we talk about the work, workforce, and workplace. So if we fast forward, fast forward to today, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic actually has, has accelerated many future of work initiatives. And what we are doing now is one of them. Yeah? Uh, previously, you know, this session, you guys will probably invite me to Malacca right? <laughs> to attend. But now we are doing it online. So this is one of the initiatives. That we can see how it has accelerated and, and given to the rise of the most significant workplace transformation in our lifetime. Uh, Industry 4.0 as well and the new normal that we are talking about uh, here is basically on how we will work, uh, who we work with and uh, where we work will be changed forever. So let's redefine what is the new normal. So redefine concept of work and productivity flexible working arrangement, working from anywhere, virtual engagement, technology, di digital connectivity and infrastructure, greater need for constant, clear and concise communication. Yeah? E-learning and demand for tech learn in digital technology skill sets. So this is what the new normal. Every day we've been hearing about new normal, norma baru, our prime minister been talking about this. So in the employment side, uh, this is what we mean by the new normal. 
So the future um, jobs landscape, if you look at here, uh, the top 10 emerging uh, let's, uh, uh, jobs that's going to be available, look at things like data analysts and scientists, uh, AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning specialists, general and operations managers, software and application de develop developers and analysts, analysts and so forth. So this emerging role uh, globally will change by 2020. So we are just like, what, two years away? And you're looking at about 133 million jobs, uh, new roles, or I would say new roles that will emerge. Um, and 80%, uh, or I'm sorry, 85% of the job uh, that will exist in 2030 uh, have, haven't been even invented yet. So hopefully uh, in 10 years time, uh, when you reflect to what we discussed here, hopefully you all can remember say, oh, Encik Ambil did mention in 2020, there are jobs that we have never heard yet in 2020 when I had this session. Yeah. So uh, this is a key finding, actually a report that was published by Dell Technology and uh, authored by the Institute of Future, uh, which is IFTF. Uh, on the next slide, um, you look at the ratio of human machine working hours in 2018 versus uh, 2022. So if you can see here um, how it has changed a lot in terms of human and machine, in terms of reasoning and decision making, uh, in terms of coordinating, developing, managing and advising. So there's a tremendous shift in terms of human and machine. So basically, um, we, we keep saying man versus machine, man versus machine. But actually, it is man, you need to work with machine. Human needs to work with machine. Yeah. So that's how the future will be. So the jobs of the future are expected to be more machine powered, uh, data driven in, than in the past. Uh, but they will also likely require human skill. Yeah? People keep asking, oh, what will happen in the future? Uh, robots are taking over our job. But at the end of the day, there are some part of it where you need human intervention, right? Humans are the one who create robots, right? It's not robots themselves. So therefore, there are things like problem solving, communication, listening, interpretation and design. That's where the human skills come in. So this is where you also as the future uh, talents of Malaysia needs to uh, improve yourself. Um, new technology in the next decade is expected to lead to the new human machine partnership uh, that will make uh, each of partners respective strength. So looking at the skills demand uh, or skill demand, sorry, uh, by 2022, yeah. So you look at uh, decreasing here on the left, uh, memory, verbal, auditory and spatial abilities management of financial and material resources, technology installation, and so forth, are expected to decrease by 2022. However, uh, there are new ones that have been created or will be increasing uh, in 2022. But now, like I said, mentioned, uh, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, this will accelerate uh, further. Um, analytical thinking and innovation, uh, creativity, originality, and initiative, emotional intelligence, reasoning, problem solving, and ideation, and so forth. So these are the skills demand that maybe the future is looking at. So as the future of Malaysia, the talents that's coming out from uh, among you guys uh, all here. So you need to take note of this. These are the areas that you will need to improve. Um, things like emotional intelligence, reasoning, problem solving, and ideation. While we look at technical skills, this kind of skills are also, or we call behavioral skills, are also uh, important. Um, the probability of automation and top skills required uh, in Malaysia. So if you look here, example, some of you uh, probably will be surprised that you can see that why are jobs like accountant, accounting, associate professional, 98% uh, uh, of, the, of, this, of, of the job in these professionals, probability of being automated. So are we saying robot will be doing our financial uh, accounting? No, basically this is uh, related to more on the back end kind of job where we can automate, you know, there's no more uh, manual jobs uh, that will be, uh, be away in this profession. Accountant and auditor, electronics and engineering technicians, aircraft technicians, 
So you can see how much things will change in the next uh, uh, few years. And you look here, uh, mentioning there, which is the top skills required by, uh, by employers yeah? uh, in Malaysia. So things like English, yeah? English, communication skills, how you communicate, uh, how well you communicate, teamwork and collaboration, problem solving, customer service, computer literacy, creativity, building effective relationship, organizational skills and multitasking. These are the top skills that are actually being looked at by our employers. Um, we have um, uh, attended many sessions uh, with various companies and to them they say that in terms of technical ability, we Malaysians are good. We are technically sound, but when it comes to the behavioral side of it, uh, that's where we are a bit lacking, especially in our fresh graduates. So I urge all of you um, uh, who will be graduating soon to take note of this and improve in any of the areas which will help you when you go out uh, to the working world. Okay, let me try to move the slide something. Okay, so on the next slide uh, is on Malaysian critical occupations. So the, we call it the COL. So COL actually identifies talent shortage uh, or shortages faced by Malaysian industries. It will monitor skill mismatch in the economy and distinguishes occupations that are sought after and hard to fill in Malaysia's economic sectors. The COL actually is uh, developed by Critical Skills Monitoring Committee, or we call it CSC which is jointly chaired by Talent Corp and the Institute of Labor Market Information and Analysis, or in short, it's called ILMIA, I-L-M-I-A. So the COL identifies basically defines critical occupations according to three main criteria, skill, sought after, and strategic. So the recently published um, 2019 and 2020 identifies 58 occupations within 18 economic sectors. What you see on this slide are some of the occupations appearing in the COL. We can't publish everything here for you, but you'll see these are those that appears in the COL. And these are the occupations that the industry needs to fill and are hiring. Yeah. So uh, these are the areas that uh, you can see, things like finance managers, policy planning managers. But for 2019-20, uh, you see that new occupations that are appearing, such as agricultural, forestry, and livestock production managers, pharmacies, metal molders and core makers, tool makers, and related workers. So these are the new occupations which has appeared, which are critical uh, for Malaysia. So the question now for all of you is how well equipped are you to fit in? Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, uh, that's going on right now. Uh, you'll be graduating soon. Uh, how am I going to fit in? I'm going to be uh, competing with not just the, uh, the other fresh graduates from other universities, as well as those who are still searching or unemployed and those who have lost their job uh, due to this uh, pandemic. So therefore, uh, being the talent of the future, we must be constantly uh, needing to learn, unlearn, relearn, co-learn, and co-create. So even for me, um, I'm now in a learning stage, you know, uh, attending uh, or being a panelist uh, through uh, such uh, technology as well. Um, so if you look now in terms of the next slide, which is on um, uh, what you call this, the career roadmap. Okay, This is what uh, you will need to do your journey in terms of being industry ready graduates. Uh, for example, um, sorry, if anyone, are you able to listen? I just wanted to check again. Yeah, I can. It's very clear. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So, like I mentioned earlier, uh, how do you make yourself industry ready graduate? So we look at the first stage, which is self-awareness. Self-awareness means identifying your strength, your motivation, and your inclination. This is where we can do this by entering the system, which is called NEXT, N-E-X-T. I will share with you later what is NEXT. This will tell you actually what are your strengths, what are the areas that you're good at. It will help you to prepare yourself. 
Secondly, you must be able to know what is the market like or market awareness. Focus which are the market strength. Uh, focus which market suits your strength or op options for you. What company require particular expertise and skills? Uh, for example, uh, we have this program called SPP, which is Semester Break Program. So um, we will have a one-to-one -one session with industry on current info base, and this can be actually uh, found on TC website. Uh, thirdly, you create your own personal brand. Once your self-awareness of what are your strengths, you understand what the market uh, is looking for, you create your own personal brand. Uh, which is through preparing all your resume, your cover letter, uh, your LinkedIn and online presence. And finally, the experience for you to gain. So for in Talent Corp, we have this program which is called Structured Internship Program, uh, whereby we um, uh, allow students the experience of gaining experience to be industry ready. In the next slides, um, okay. So these are the things that will help you actually get started, what we have in Talent Corp. Uh, the Nurturing Expert Program, I urge that all of you uh, to go in, if you haven't uh, heard of this, next, whereby you can go in and fill up the holistic professional tool, profiling tool, sorry, to understand the fit between a person's motivation, job role, and their interests. So you can, you, you can look at the website that, I've included, that we've included there, and uh, you can go go ahead and uh, use the system. It's actually FOC and it help you to identify your strength. Uh, internships and exposure. Um, SIP encourages employers to provide equality internship programs. Uh, my ICI uh, and my APEC offers opportunity as well and SPP. So these are some of the things that uh, we allow you uh, or the opportunity for you for exposure. Young employee students, yes, is, a, is something that we have just introduced last year uh, or early of the year, is a framework of action designed to increase graduate employability skills in collaboration with strategic and passionate industry and academic um, collaborators. Uh, we offer solution-focused intervention to enhance awareness and inculcate wisdom. So there are many initiatives under YES. And lastly, we have this what we call uh, Kisah Siswa. Yeah? And uh, it's a market marketability in initiative uh, to help you and uh, uh, in terms of young talent pool to chart your future strategic careers. So uh, these are the things that you can actually find in our website. You can just go to our website and have a look at all these details. Yeah? The question now is uh, lastly for my last slide that I have here, uh, those who plan to work in the forthcoming future have to have a mindset of working and learning and working and learning and working and learning in order to make a career. So it's very clear that uh, you need to prepare yourself, which I have mentioned earlier, on top of your technical skill, you need to build on your behavioral skills. We talk about uh, being creative, um, uh, communication skill, improving on your communication skill, uh, which will help you in the future. So uh, last but not least, um, as mentioned in the start of my presentation, new digital technologies are expected to take away many jobs. We, there's no doubt about it. However, don't worry, they will create new ones. Yeah. So you need to grasp of this op opportunity. Uh, all of you must continuously learn new skills, commit to constant self-improvement and become a lifelong learner. Lifelong learning in the future of work means basically humans and machines will need to work together. And because machines and humans to manage and control them, therefore future workers will need to always equip ourselves with new and updated skills uh, in order for us to work with the machines. Uh, so with that, I, I end my presentation for today. I uh, hope uh, it kind of gives you a bit of limelight uh, what is uh, expected uh, in the future, in terms of future of work. And I guess uh, I'll pass it back to the to, to Sugi, I guess. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Amril. I'll pass to Lin Sugi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amri.
Now yeah. we proceed to the Q&A session. And mm. the question is at the right corner in the chat box. Uh, sorry, hold on. There. Okay, there's one question from Dr. Yusri. Uh, he, mm -hmm. His question is, in a very good company like Talent Corp, could you elaborate on the implementation of talent management in Talent Corp? Sorry, I, I lost. Uh, can you repeat that, please? <laughs> Sorry. In a very yeah. good company like Talent Corp, mm. could you mm -hmm. elaborate on the implementation of talent management in Talent Corp? Oh, okay. So, uh, the, in organization like uh, Talent Corp, as well as any other organization, um, we uh, try to develop our talents uh, as much as possible. So one way that we do, we encourage our staff to attend uh, trainings uh, to help themselves in carrying out their role. So since we have various departments, so the staff will be given opportunity to attend trainings, uh, attend seminars, uh, programs which will help them to accelerate their learning curve. So like I've mentioned, uh, we are talking about future of work. It's new to everyone. So likewise for Talent Corp, uh, in order to fit into that kind of uh, role, uh, environment, we ourselves will also have to equip and learn what are the new things out there uh, in terms of managing our talents. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, the second question is from Pang Bin Ai from Group. She wants to know that how a firm's management will update their talent strategy from a traditional to an industry 4.0 approach. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that, please? Uh, from Pang Jing Ai, Group 6, she wants to know that how a firm's management will update their talent strategy from a traditional to an industry 4.0 approach. Ah, okay, that's a good question. I think this is the most uh, challenging part which many organizations face in terms of equipping their talents uh, for industry form talent uh, 4.0. So like I mentioned again, many companies, what they have done, they have taken the initiative to upscale or reskill their talents to fit the requirement. So like I mentioned previously, um, those days, uh, for example, those who are used to doing manual work, manual labor, for example, in the manufacturing, now everything is machine oriented. Yeah, we like the use of machine robotics. So that's where companies such as in manufacturing, they will send their, their, their staff to reskill, to help themselves to cope with the changes that's happening uh, with the future of work. Would that be okay? Okay. The next question mm -hmm. is from Group Three. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gan Wong So, she wants to know, in your opinion, what are the best way can a company do to attract talents and keep the talented individuals within the company? Ah, okay. So, uh, talent retention has always been uh, a never-ending uh, issue faced by any organization uh, because of the competition that we face uh, from various uh, industries as well. So, in order to ensure that the talents are, uh, are kept, uh, maintained in terms of our talent retention, uh, organization would, uh, apart, of course, the most, the most important thing would be the remuneration, right? The, the packages, the salary, the benefits, that's one of them. The other part that I mentioned is the training, the opportunity to send staff for training, uh, which is to help them to upskill themselves as well as gain new knowledge. And thirdly, of course, uh, the environment that we are in, uh, the organization culture. So these are some of examples how we can try to uh, maintain our staff retention. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have Tilly May from Group 2. She wants to know that how does AI help talent management during the recruitment process? Ah, okay. So AI in talent management. Okay, for Talent Corp, uh, we are still, uh, because we are such a small organization, uh, our recruitment uh, is still to the normal way of uh, of. Uh, of recruitment where recruiting where we can connect with uh, headhunters or we have uh, reference 
But in some organization, especially the big ones where they're hiring are uh, in great numbers, yeah. So they are starting to use AI whereby there is a system. Uh, there's a lot now uh, in the market where they can purchase recruitment online system where 50% uh, of the job of identifying the right candidate for the job uh, is done by the uh, AI. So for example, uh, when you up, let's say for example, you apply to a particular uh, company um, and they're using that, that system. So when you, you put in your CV, your resume, uh, then the, the, the system will be able to uh, more or less identify if whether you are suitable for the job or not. So that's why this goes back to what I mentioned earlier uh, in the roadmap that I've, I've shared with you, uh, whereby you will need to have a, a good resume, understanding what is the market about, and sell yourself uh, to the resume. So that this is an example of how AI is being used in recruitment. Okay, our next question is from Gan Hui Sing, Group 4. Uh, the question is whether the talent management is good for both employer and employee or not. Whether talent management is good is good for both employer and employee. Hmm. I'm not so sure what is the uh, the question is uh, relating to about. Uh, but if I may, uh, if I if if I understand it correctly. Um, it is important for both uh, employer and employee. So like I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, a good talent management uh, process or initiative that we have in the organization uh, will help to manage the talent retention and uh, for, for the company, where else for, uh, for the staff, uh, for employees, uh, is basically you are loyal to the organization, yeah? So that you become the employer of choice. That's that's if I understand correctly the question. Thank you. Now we have the last question from group three, Yosia Ki. The question mm. is, is talent management important for every company to implement? Uh, yeah, of course, it's very important. Uh, talent management is definitely important. So like I mentioned again, uh, managing talent is important in any organization, uh, be it uh, in GLC and MNCs, even to the small shop, even to to the, the the supermarkets, yeah, the sundry shops, the mom and pop shops, you, you still need to manage talent. It's just that it's being done in different ways, yeah. In some organization, it's done through processes, it's done through system. Yeah, in other organization, especially like SMEs, it's through the culture, uh, how you inculcate the right culture, the right environment. That is part of what we mean by talent management. So talent management is actually a very wide area when you talk about talent management. But in a nutshell, uh, it is very important uh, to ensure that uh, the relationship between uh, employer and employee is, is in good state. That's how I would put it. Uh, guys, any more questions? I think that's all for this session. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Amri, for gracing our seminar with your presence and knowledge sharing. We are truly okay. appreciate. So before we end this session, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Amri, Mr. Joshua, Dr. Yosri, and my fellow friends for the photography session. So everyone, please turn on your video cam. Okay. Okay. okay, Encik Amri, thank you. Ah. Terima kasih. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope, I hope boleh, that information. Boleh ni lah, boleh tunggu eh, sampai habis eh. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Ah, nanti bagi komen lah, dia orang buat presentation, tengok lah macam mana lah, talented ke tak ni, budak-budak ni. Okay, I think, I think like I mentioned, the important thing is because they, they are all the final year student kan. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, sebab COVID ni kan, kalau tidak, yeah, uh, yeah. sebab Kalau tidak dia dah grade dah bulan 6 hari tu exam final dah. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, yeah. Sebab PKP oh. ni ditunda sampai ujung tahun lah. Dia orang habiskan mm. semester ni kan. Ya, mm -hmm. ya, yep, yep. betul. Okay dah, foto, session. Uh, Mr. Amri, you can stop sharing the slide. Okay, sure, sorry. Thank you. Is it okay now? Uh, no.
right? Yeah, it's okay now. Thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, hi everyone, I got a meeting later on, so I need to withdraw out now. Got an urgent meeting at 11.30, so so sorry, cannot participate until... Oh, so sorry to hear about and, that, Mr. Yeah, Joshua. <laughs> I received a call from our management, so I need to... Uh, well, thank you very much again. Okay, okay, no problem. Right. Stay safe, everybody. Okay. Bye, have a nice day. Bye, thank, thank you, you Mr. Joshua. Bye, have a nice day. Mm. Thank, thank you, Mr. Joshua. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Still have a lot of people didn't open their camera, but I just take it. Okay, then. Okay, so now I pass the mic to the Boston MC. Thank you. Thank you, Sochi.